to Santa on Rogers TV. Nice to know Santa still takes phone calls. It's not all Twitter and text messages. You can actually phone and talk to Santa Claus. Big hit there in the corner. And now tempers flare. Look at this. Everybody in on this one. Less than five minutes remaining in the period. 4.57 to go. And everyone's got a dance partner here. Some going for more than one after a big hit in the corner. And you right in on that. And you see the gloves drop there. He's trying to go after him. And it's impossible. It's like he's got his gloves off too. Webster has his off because he's got a good hold on McEwen. As you see Lemieux near the bottom of that. Run. Well, Santa might have some suspensions if these lads aren't careful. And there you see Lemieux down on all fours. Brendan Lemieux egging the crowd on here. And you see Sam Bennett. He's going to head off to the dressing room, as does Lemieux. As mentioned, less than five minutes remaining in the period. And he's on that play. It looked like Fawcett bumped Bennett as they were going by. They've had been going at words for a while, and they did that. Although, Leinsman's got a good man on him there. Now, take a look here where this starts, and it's a push into the corner there on McEwen by Lemieux. And right away, they take exception. You take a look at McEwen there, that jumping punch yeah. in on the play. That might be something that the OHL winds up reviewing. As he was in there pretty hard and pretty fast. Left his feet. Clearly taking exception. On that hit, Lemieux threw him into the corner. And here you see everybody tangled up afterwards. So it will take a moment for them to get all the equipment off the ice here. 457 remaining in the third. Lemieux and McEwen. Looks like their nights are done. And I'm sure some other penalties will be announced here as well. We'll I'll have to figure out who in that pile they will catch. I'm not entirely sure if the officials caught the punch, the uh, jumping punch by McEwen on that one. If they did, he may well be gone. Fawcett was being pulled back to the bench. You gotta figure that even if he doesn't get a fighting major, he may wind up with a 10 minute misconduct, which would also end his night. Of course, the Kingston Frontenac's only dressed 11 forwards tonight. Darcy Greenaway went down pretty quickly and he did not return, so they're at 10 right now before, obviously, anyone else leaving. I guess Bennett's another one down. That puts them down to nine. And we'll see what else is determined from there. And on the Barry side, you got Aaron Ekblad serving the second of a two-game suspension for a late fight in the London game on Friday last week. It's the final game of the weekend for both teams. Frontenacs don't play again until Friday next week. They'll host the Mississauga Steelheads. 7 o'clock puck drop for Kojiko viewers. And for the rest of us on the OHL Action Pack, Barry gets Oshawa and Plymouth here next week. And then they wrap up the series in Peterborough Sunday afternoon. Wrap up the uh, first half, excuse me. And you see the officials there explaining to Colts coach Dale Howardchuk what the calls will be. Right now, only Lemieux's penalty is up, and it's a two-minute penalty. Let's see. Two-minute penalty for checking from behind. Referee Tom Sweeney over talking to Dale Howarchuk, giving him the explanation on that. And now Todd Gill is advised over at the Kingston bench. So it appears Kingston may get a power play here, but down by five with under five minutes remaining. Now, these two teams won't meet again until February 1st in Kingston. And then on, I believe, the last weekend of the season, the Thursday night of it, Kingston will be in Barrie. So they won't see a lot of each other for a while. After tonight. If you're just joining us here at the Barry Molson Center, maybe flipping around the OHL action pack tonight, watching action elsewhere. Welcome to Barry. It's a 6-1 Barry lead. Three goals 
in the third period for the Colts, or in the first period, excuse me, to jump on top early, and they would never look back in this one. Mike Morrison coming on in relief of Colin Furlong, who allowed three goals on 11 shots. Got the hook from Todd Gill after the first 20. Mike Morrison came on in relief to start period number two. Kingston was able to escape the second period, still down by three, but Colts have opened the floodgates here and tacked on three more for a 6-1 lead. There you see the rest of the explanations being done. And faceoff will be in the Colts defensive zone. It looks like it will be a five on four situation. At this point, the only penalty causing a power play was Lemieux's one likely a checking from behind. And we'll 